Oh, it's a wonderful Wednesday. Now that you've shown up, <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday. It is August 23rd. Tomorrow being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host, Taylor, we're there for an hour to talk to other investors about stocks they're interested in. So if you got a ticker you want us to take a look at, come on in. Drop it in the comments. I'll go over the information. Taylor will look over the charts and we'll give you our opinion on it, whatever that's worth to you. Now, occasionally we don't have enough time to look at all the tickers. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in early. I mean before the show starts. I actually put up a placeholder for this video around 2.30, 3 o'clock, and you can put your comments in before the show starts. So I'll get a chance to see it before the show starts, and that'll give me more time to actually look at your ticker. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You have been formally invited. So what do we like to do on this show? Yes, we like to look for hot penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under 5 bucks on any market that have potential to make us some money. Now, when I go looking for hot penny stocks, unlike most people, I'm not doing it through the news. I can't determine which piece of news is hot enough to make the charts run. What I can determine is what chart looks like it's ready to run. So I'm looking for charts that have heat first. I want to see the volume coming in, or I want to see a breakout setup, or maybe a long extended surge, or big bounces back to back over a short period of time anything that makes that chart look tempting. When I find a chart like that, then I go rummaging around through all the information, the press releases, the filings, looking for that catalyst. When I find one, then I've got a hot penny stock. And I bring three of these to you on most days. And today is most days. First one we're going to take a look at is ticker ASRE Astra Energy. Matter of fact, all the companies we're looking at today coincidentally are involved in the energy sector one way or another. ASRE, she had some big news come out not too many days ago and she started to run on that news. She broke out over 200, nice rocket run, came down, landed on the 200 and looks like she's ready to bounce again. And the news is big. So I think there is more to be gotten here. ASRE, she finished the day just about 36 cents and at 16% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC. We like to call this the better tier. It's better than the pinks because they have to audit their financials. The pinks, you don't get any validated information. When you look at the financials, those are called disclosures because the management's just disclosing the numbers that they have, but no CPA looked at them. On the QB, a CPA actually goes through their numbers, does all the auditing, so now we have real numbers we can use to measure the company. They're called fundamentals. They also have that verified profile and transfer agent I'm always telling you to look for. That's validated information. It's being looked at behind the scenes by an unbiased party. We like to see those. And we got a bonus here. Penny stock exempt is great. The stock is at 36 cents and they're on the OTC market, but they legally are not a penny stock. Wow. Well, because a penny stock is considered risky and being penny stock exempt means you eliminated that risk. The way you do that is by proving yourselves, being in business for three to five years, having assets or revenues in millions of dollars during that time period and keeping up with your financials. You prove yourself to be responsible. Once you do that, you're no longer considered a penny stock, which means you don't have to jump through all the hoops like the penny stocks do. So that's good for us. They also have independent directors. Now, the only reason I know of that you ever see independent directors listed over here, or for that matter, even having them on the payroll, is when you have plans to uplist. You have to have independent directors to uplist. Now, I don't know the history of this company. They may have just uplisted from the pink. They would have used them and they might still be here, but I don't know. So maybe they have plans to go up to the QX or the NASDAQ. They are sitting there. So what does Astra Energy do? All right, we are gonna look at this description and then I'm gonna give you a broader description. Astra Energy Inc. is an emerging leader in the development of clean and renewable energy projects, as well as in the acquisition and development of technology in the waste to energy project sector. 
Now that doesn't sound too pretty, waste, too energy, but I gotta tell you, it's probably one of the hottest sectors out there because it's the best of two worlds. You are not only disposing of waste, which is a problem, but you're getting energy from that waste and we can use all the energy we can get. These projects will specialize in providing sustainable energy and through its waste to energy technology will safely convert millions of tons of waste from municipalities and businesses into valuable clean, renewable biofuels, biodiesel, and jet fuel. Now, I think this is a too narrow of a description of the company. So I've jumped on over here to their website and I discovered they basically have three divisions that each work with energy in a very unique way. First one here is Regreen Technologies. Now, this is the one that just had big news coming out of California. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. Regreen Technologies, on August 5th, 2022, Astra entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Regreen Technologies. Regreen is the sole owner of the Total Waste System, TWS, a patented process using specialized technology to turn any solid waste material into marketable product with zero bacteria and zero carbon footprint. This includes not only industrial, domestic, institutional, constructional, and commercial waste, but also includes specialized waste in organic forms such as food waste, feedstock, hemp, seaweed, palm leaves, and green biomass. You hear that? They're taking garbage and turning it into energy and getting rid of all the bacteria at the same time. Outstanding. The re-green system is designed to eliminate the need for landfills. This is a hot product. Folks, landfills are some of the most dangerous areas in the country next to nuclear centers, except nuclear centers are monitored. I'm not saying that landfills aren't, but landfills have a lot of stuff thrown in them by people like us who just don't care what we throw away, even though we know better. And these toxins, these metals, they can leach out into the waters and into the lands of the communities around these landfills. So there's always a potential problem there. So it would be nice to get rid of landfills and get free energy not having to have them. Another division they have here is called Hawcomb Energy Systems. Astra Energy and Hawcomb Energy entered into a joint venture creating Astra Hawcomb Energy Systems to commercialize the HES inline power generator, making scalable zero emission energy more accessible everywhere that electricity is needed. Now this is the interesting part. The ILPG is a revolutionary clean energy technology that takes power input from any source, fossil fuels or renewables, and then magnifies the output by over 200%. Put in this much, get out that much. That's an outstanding product. And the third one I find very interesting, and I like this a lot, 360 Solar. 360 Solar is the developer of the first of its kind commercial solar tower. 360's patent pending design facilitates the deployment of solar panels in a manner that is substantially more energy cleanse than traditional ground mount solar farms. Not to mention, it uses 90% less land. I love this. I think this is nice looking. I think it looks better than those solar farms. And let's face it, any company could afford this. Not every company has that much land for a solar farm, but they could easily put up a tower. So I think the company's got three very interesting divisions here that could potentially explode. And the news that just came out today about Regreen in California, this is big news. This could be the wick on the stick of dynamite. All right, let's take a look at that relative volume for ASRE. Well, she jumped going from about 250,000 to almost 650,000. Share structure for ASRE. Don't know if the numbers are, cor are correct. We're just gonna presume they are. Outstanding share count is at 75 million. Looks like the insiders own about 33 million of them. That's what the management is holding. And then the unrestricted shares, I like to call the float. That is about 41 million. It's not a bad float. It's not super low, but 41 is not a bad float at all. Financials for ASRE. All right, looks like 2022 was their first year of revenues and it wasn't very much. No, not 20, 
five dollars we got three zeros up here we got to put behind any of the numbers down here so they did twenty five thousand dollars at the end of august of 2022 and it didn't cost them anything to do that that's interesting quarterly uh-oh where'd the money go well i'm not real concerned about their revenues right now because the news that just came out this is going to make revenues coming in i am sure of that looking at the filings all right we've got a three here which is telling us how many shares one of the insider owns and then we've got a couple eight case here which is about management changes and bylaws and stuff like that so taking a look at our news they have lots of news and we don't have time to go through all of it so i'm going to save you some due diligence but i have scrolled back here to may 25th and i stopped here particularly because this piece of news correlates with the most current piece of news we're going to take a look at which is what i consider the catalyst so this happened may 25th the company's subsidiary regreen technologies secures agreement to install a waste to energy technology system at a material recycling facility in southern california great place to get your business going then on june 15th the company announced a strategic partnership with fambali usa on the 20th they secured a 207 acre land package for a clean and renewable energy park project at the kibble landfill in zanzibar and then on the 22nd of june boy that's been a busy month they execute a memorandum of understanding with tanzanian government for the development of a 350 megawatt combined cycle power plant you know for a company that hasn't got any revenues they're sure doing a lot of big business. I guess the money is just about ready to come in. Speaking about money, looks like we got a new CEO here at the beginning of August. And the first thing he does is he immediately pays off convertible note ahead of maturity date. I got no problem with people who want to pay their debts early. None at all. And then we've got the big piece of news that came out August 21st. They tell us here that the company's subsidiary, Regrin Technologies, achieved significant results in processing waste into non-waste Class A compostable commodity. This is impressive. As determined through independent testing by the state of California by soil control labs, they have determined that when processing municipal solid waste through the Regrin system, the output produced has been converted into an odorless material free of harmful bacteria and pathogens which does not need to be further treated or even transported to the landfill as a matter of fact you can use the material as compost or we can further refine it to a more valuable marketable bioproduct how amazing is that we're taking literal garbage converting it with some technology getting energy out of it and then we have compost for our gardens bye bye landfills now what is most important here is that they comply with the california new bill these results represent validation that the re-green technology and processing system complies with the california senate bill 1383 a valid solution that all municipal recovery facilities in California can now utilize. Tell me that's not going to bring in some buku bucks. Now, right now, they're charging between $50 and $70 per ton. They say there is 300 million tons generated annually, and it is a $140 billion market. Now, I don't know how much competition a company like this can have right i know there's a lot of recycling facilities out there but who's turning our garbage into compost and getting energy from it jeez all right let's go take a look at this bouncing chart let's do something fun let's do some charting we're gonna do it on thinkorswim this is the free trading platform you get when you sign up with td ameritrade and that don't cost you nothing either so we are looking at astra energy ticker asre that is a six month, four hour view. Our 200 was way the heck up here, telling us that the price was way higher further back, but we're not gonna look at it. She had a big fall. She has come close to the price. Our price, it has been going sideways for a very long time. Now it looks flat, but that it is not. Actually, from this little green spot here to the top right there, that is a 100% jump right there. 
but she is going sideways. There's no doubt about that. Even when it got close to the 200, it really didn't make any serious attempt to get on top. It just kept beating up underneath. We hit our low bubble of three cents at the beginning of July. First week of August, we hit our high of 44 cents. Between the two bubbles, 1,300% gains. She has rolled off of that high, coming down, bouncing off of the 50-day SMA, and that was a big bounce. She went from 25 cents all the way up to 42 cents, falling back to her current price of 35 cents, right in the middle. And she is right there on her 20-day SMA, looking sweet. We have got lots of volume here, folks. And I want you to notice where the downfall happened, the volume was the least. The volume comes in for the buying not the selling. Our oscillators, uh, they're about even keel right now. They had a lot of strength. They cooled off and right now they're just kind of sitting there not doing a whole lot of anything. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So we got a low bubble 20 days ago, just under 12 cents. She was under the 200, Busted right through that, took one solid bounce off her 50-day SMA to hit that high, and she has rolled around. Now, she could have easily come down to that 200-day SMA, but she didn't. She's bouncing off of one of those SMAs on those other time periods. She has now jumped from uh, 28 cents up to that 42 and fallen right onto the 50-day SMA. Smack dab on top of it. Oscillators. Nothing to say here. I mean, they are flat. They are totally cool right now. Not hot, not cold. They're just sitting there waiting for something to happen. Five day, five minute. So she's been falling for the last five days, actually hitting a low today of that 27 cents, bouncing off of that low, hard and furious, going through every single SMA, hitting the high, falling back, bouncing off of, it looks to be the 200 haul. The 200 haul we've been talking a lot about here, this is a lot like your 200 day SMA, except it puts more credence on current prices. And we've been seeing a lot of penny stocks paying heed to this. So if you want an extra tool on your chart, add the 200 haul, H-U-L-L. -L. Why is it purple and blue? Who asked that? I chose that. It is purple when it's falling. It's blue when it's rising. You can actually do that to any of these lines. I just chose to do it for that one. So she has bounced off the 200 haul. She's put herself right on top of the uh, 200 SMA. And that 50-day SMA is just about ready to cross the 200. Folks, that should be a power pump. That is a golden cross. You can almost expect the price to push up when that cross is over. And that looks like it's going to happen first thing tomorrow. Our oscillators down here have got nothing to say. Look how flat they are. Everything has just gone sideways. Everything has had a big rip, a big dip, and now it's taking a breather. But we've got big news. They're in California. They've been approved to take filthy waste, turn it into clean energy and clean compost. I think this is going to take off in California. And then they can launch in any other state they want in any other country they want. I see a lot of potential here, folks. A-S-R-E. Do you see it? Our next penny stock comes from the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. This is ESS Tech, ticker GWH. We do have a hot chart. It was an atypical breakout chart that already broke out. She then came back down underneath the 200, and right now she's been climbing. She's put herself right up underneath the 200 and has a bunch of volume backing her up. Their revenues have been growing, and they just came out with another set of good financials. I think it's a good time to look at her. GWH, she finished today at $1.48, just a little more than 4% gains. Now, looking at the most recent description from the most recent press release, they tell us here that our mission is to accelerate global decarbonization by providing safe, sustainable, long-duration energy storage that powers people, communities, and businesses with clean, renewable energy anytime and anywhere it's needed. As more renewable energy is added to the grid, long-duration energy storage is going to be essential to providing the reliability and resilience we need when the sun is not shining and the wind is not blowing. Our technology, our batteries, uses earth-abundant iron, salt, and water.
to deliver environmentally safe solutions capable of providing up to 12 hours of flexible energy capacity for commercial and utility scale energy storage applications. Established in 2011, the company enables project developers, independent power producers, utilities, and other large energy users to deploy reliable, sustainable, long-duration energy storage solutions. Now, bouncing on over to their website, we get a little information about this battery. There's lots of different batteries out there. Some of them aren't so good. The lead acid battery. We've got our new lithium ion battery, which is what DFLI works with. We looked at another company that had water and electrolytes. Totally safe, couldn't explode. Well, you got another totally safe battery here. They tell us that the Iron Flow battery, their solutions are mature second generation systems that offer unmatched cost and sustainability with performance guaranteed through an independent insurer, Munich RE. Now check this out, conventional battery chemistries with limited cycle life deliver up to 7 to 10 year life cycles before requiring some sort of fix. ESS Iron Flow Chemistry delivers 25 years or more with no degradation to the battery. So it just keeps working the way it's supposed to. Now they say it will work indefinitely, but they got to put a time limit on it. So they say 25 years plus. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Nice. We got over 100% increase, jumping from 1.1 million to 2.5 million. Share structure for GWH. They don't give us a lot of information here. All we know is the outstanding share count. It is up there at 154 million. Float can't be any higher than the outstanding share count, so we know it won't be higher than that. And it could be considerably less. You never can tell. Financials for GWH. As you can see at the end of 2022, this was their first revenues, $894,000. Don't forget those three zeros up there. And on the quarterly, boom, we explode. Uh, here for June, they did $2.8 million compared to $372,000 the quarter before. Looking at those disclosures. We just had a 10Q come out and the 8K, which tells you that their quarterly financial just came out. Rather than jump into either one of those, we're just going to jump on into it. Now, the news about their financials is really the only news we've got to look at. That was back on August 8th. We do have other pieces of news here, but it's really not anything that we would be interested in. So, jumping into that quarterly financial news press... They highlight the big deals. Record revenue, 2.8 million. Record revenues, that right there says a lot. They jumped from 300,000 to 2.1 million, now to 2.8 million. They delivered energy warehouses, nine of them, to four new customers, and they announced a new partnership with LEAG. And they tell us that their innovative, sustainable iron flow battery technology remains the key to our success and fuels our potential for long-term growth and profitability. They're growing. That's the bottom line. The proof is in the pudding. They're making deals. They're doing business. They're bringing in stronger revenues. And the chart is ready to break out. Let's go take a look at it. Taking a look at GWH, of course, it's a six-month, four-hour view. Our high was six months ago at $3.40, and she has been falling for a very long time underneath the 200 all this time, down to a low bubble in May. Now, we had a fake break right there. This was a perfect setup for her to take off, but it all went awry and south, literally. She fell down to that low of $0.75 cents on the 15th of May. She got up over the 200 again and she was climbing for a few months and now she's fallen back down. And the last two days, she is starting her recovery. She was underneath all the SMAs, has gotten on top of all of them and put herself right up underneath the 200. She started her jump there from a dollar seven and went to a dollar 61. Pulled back, looks like she's at about a buck 52 right now and she closed today at a dollar 48. Volume has been increasing. And our oscillators are looking awesome. RSI is up at 61. Our MACD is pushing up, already crossed the signal line. P 
PPO has just had a crossover. It too is pushing up and our ADX is going down. Do you see the pattern here with this blue line and the red line? You kind of see like an hourglass here. Well, when the blue line and the red line are coming together, the price is falling. When it gets real close and starts to separate, the price climbs. So when they're coming together, you have a fall. When they're pushing apart, you have a climb. This is looking outstanding right now, folks. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So about 16 days ago, we had a high of $2 and then a long fall down to $1.07, bouncing off of our 200-day haul and then jumping up on top of our 200-day SMA. She got over it, bounced off of it, pushed herself up, and she's sitting right on top of the 9-day SMA. You can't climb unless you're on top of the 9, so that's looking good. Look at our SMAs. Our 200 haul, 50 day, and 20 are all aiming towards that 200. As soon as each one crosses, that will be a golden cross. You can expect an oomph in the price. It should jump. Osculators are cooling off a little bit right now. Our PPO has gone plancid. Our MACD has had a crossover downside. And believe it or not, our RSI is climbing. Yes, it should be. Five day, five minute view. So she was under the 200 here little bit up a little bit down once she got flat you can see our 200 went flat here that was it she jumped up on top of the 200 on the five minute chart and she started the climb that's all it took was a flat 200 day sma she has not touched the 200 since she left it she has been all around the 50 looks like she's coming back up over that 50 right now Osculators say exactly that. You can see everything is turned around and coming up. We have a recovery happening right now. So it looks good, folks. It has potential. We don't have a driving catalyst. We just have a company that's had good financials on top of another good financial, and they've been showing us that they're growing. That's never bad for business. GWH, keep your eye on it for the next couple of days. Last ticker we're taking a look at comes from the OTC, but it comes from the best tier. That's what they call the QX. That is the top tier on the OTC. This is the most transparent, the most trustworthy tier you can trade on the OTC. They give us all the information they have on the company. So much information that they could easily be on the major exchange if they wanted to. So we are looking at consolidated uranium, ticker C-U-R-U-F. Kirov. This is a mining company that deals with uranium, right? I do think they mine other metals as well, but primarily uranium. Now the chart, it's looking good. It's already broke out over the 200 and she's climbing. And right now she's gaining momentum and climbing faster. And why not? They had some hot news come out just about a week ago. Yeah, a week ago about a spin out. They're taking their uranium projects, eight or nine of them, putting them all together, and they're going to spin this out onto the major exchange, and we get free dividends. Now, even if you're not interested in the dividends, a lot of other people are, and that's going to be the driving force that gets this stock moving. So, ticker C-U-R-U-F, Curuf, finished the day at $1.25 with almost 6% gains. Now, they got every green tick we could hope for over here. That looks dreamy. Verified profile, transfer agent verified, penny stock exempt, and they've got independent directors. Though, that would mean that they would be going to the major exchange. I'd check into that. All right, looking at their business description, it is short, but it is suffice. Consolidated Uranium is a uranium exploration and mining company. So, what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's nice. We got almost a 500% increase. No, I know they're not big numbers. She jumped from 36,000 up to 156,000. That shows us there is attention being paid to this, and I'm sure a lot more is going to come. Share structure for the company. They tell us the outstanding share count is 100 million. And they do give us a float down here, and it's not too out of date. That's March of 2023. They tell us that the float is just about 80 million. That might be right. If not, it won't be any higher than 100 million. Looking at the financials for Kirov, we got nothing to look at. Not on the annual, not on the quarterly. 
But honestly, I wouldn't worry too much about that because that's not the catalyst. We're not looking at a company that's growing. We're looking at a company that's giving away free shares. They got themselves a spin out. Disclosures. We've got nothing here since 2021. So let's dive on into that news. All right, so it was all the way back here on May 24th. This is when the company first announced their spin out. It was all the way back then. Between then and now, we've had some news. On June 14th, the company was to acquire the past producing Humo uranium vandium copper project in Argentina. They are commencing drilling and reopening the underground at the Tony M mine. At the beginning of July, they announced private placement by Premier American Uranium for proceeds of at least 10.3 million Canadian dollars. A private placement means somebody else is investing in the company. That's not a public offering. Then on the 1st of August, the company closes their previously announced Humine Uranium Vandium Copper Project. So now that is theirs legitimately. And then we had news that came out on the 16th. Consolidated Uranium received shareholder and court approval for the spin out of Premier American Uranium. Now, I found an article about this news press, which is just a little bit easier to read. Canadian Uranium Explorer, Consolidated Uranium, has secured approval from the Ontario Superior Court of Justice for the previously announced spin-out of Premier American Uranium, ticker PUR, a pure play U.S. uranium company. In May 2023, the company proposed the spin-out to focus on the acquisition, exploration, and development of uranium projects, including the Great Divide Basin and the Cyclone in Wyoming as well as the Unraven Mineral Belt and the Monogram Mesa Project in Colorado. PUR plans to begin work programs to advance its portfolio this year. When completed, the spin-out will result in the company transferring ownership of some of its indirect subsidiaries that hold eight U.S. Department of Energy leases and certain patented claims in Colorado to PUR for 7.7 .7 million shares. Now, for a little more information, I've actually jumped on over here to the press release. They tell us that the company is going to give us another press release five days in advance of the effective date. Now, what this sounds like to me is they're going to wait five days before the cutoff date. They're going to give us a news press saying five days from now is the last day you can buy shares. So you can buy shares now. It's all qualifying. But by the time they give us that letter, there's going to be five days left. That's cutting it short. But it's really shorter than that because you have to remember T plus 2. Transaction time takes two days. If you buy something today, it doesn't show your ownership in the system till two days from now. So on the last day, you might buy shares and you're literally on time. But it's not going to show up in the system for two days and you will not get shares. But if you're not playing this for the dividend, don't worry about that. It's just another catalyst. When that comes out, people will get excited. So let's go take a look at this chart. I think she's going to run because people love to get free shares. It's a wild and wacky chart for ticker CURUF, Consolidated Uranium. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We got a high bubble in January of $1.45, a huge fall down to the low bubble of $0.81. Cents. We did that in March. Now, she's done a lot of bouncing around here. She finally got up on top of her 200 with some more volatility. But right now, she has had a change of heart. She has started to rocket. She has started to climb, folks. Every single SMA is turning up right now, including our 200. All of our price bars have gotten much bigger than all the bars before. Our volume has been increasing day after day for the last 10 days. And our osculators look outstanding. PPO going to the moon. MACD climbing strong with the whole forest of green bars underneath her. And our RSI is clear up at 67. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view, about 16 days ago, we had a low of 98 cents. She got up over top of that 200, had herself what I like to call a rubber ball bounce, came underneath the 200 like water and came back up. And from that point, she has been climbing, going through all of her SMAs, floating on the nine day, hitting a high of $1.28 today. 
She has pulled back, but she is still sitting on top of her nine day. Oscillators, our PPO is still growing, looking promising. MACD has a lot of strength, but it shows a little bit of pullback, all because of that one red bar right there. And our RSI was in the overbought for a large part of the day. Right now, she's at 66. Five day, five minute. Well, that is looking nice. There's that low, 99 cents, pushed herself up. There, we got a new 200 on the board. You can see how excited she was just to get over that 200, and she did not look back. She's been floating on that nine day SMA, and it looks like she's probably gonna bounce off of the 20 here. Oscillators are a bit cool, but it really isn't about what's gonna happen tomorrow. We've got time here. How much time? We don't know. They're gonna give us a press release and give us the cutoff date. Between now and that letter, we're gonna see some climbs. When that press release comes out, we'll probably see some more climbs because the window of opportunity will be closing really fast. So C-U-R-U-F, it's definitely a play you wanna keep your eye on. Whew, I gotta tell you what, folks, I am sweating up a storm. It is hot. It's like 100 degrees up here in Michigan. And because the noise my air conditioner makes, I can't run it while I'm doing this. So to be honest, I am glad this video is over because I am hot. Speaking of hot, I gave you three hot stocks today. I think there's a lot going on with them, but they deserve some more due diligence. So do that, won't you? Remember, folks, the more you know, whew, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> See you, folks.